Let's pray together right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you because we trust in you. We believe you in the power of your word, the power of your spirit. I pray, God, in heaven that you hear our requests. We can bring them to you with faith believing. God, you're able to take care of every need that was mentioned. Every need that was mentioned in this house, you're able to take care of it. God, we give you praise for it in advance. We thank you, Lord, for your healing power. You paid that price on Calvary. There's not a new price to pay for healing. We just want to let our faith out. Lord, teach us to believe. Help us to believe more and more and more. Because if we can believe, anything is possible. Bless this service tonight. Bless the kids. Bless the students. Bless the adult class. Every part of the service. We give you praise, honor, and glory for it. You are our King. You are our Savior. You are our Lord. We believe in you. And we love you. We worship you. Can we praise the Lord just a little bit? Come on, let's praise Him. Let's worship. Come on. I will sing unto the Lord. He is worthy. For he is worthy to be praised. I will sing unto the Lord and bless His holy name. I will sing unto the Lord. For He is worthy to be praised. I will sing unto the Lord. receive our evening offering and before we do that I got a little presentation to make 
Sister Amanda has been doing all kinds of neat little deals on Facebook, and we appreciate everybody that participates and like to encourage those that haven't to participate. But uh, Easter Sunday, was that when it was? Easter Sunday, she did a little promotion deal, and everybody was supposed to tag three people, I think, and then share a post, and then we were going to draw out a name, and uh, we drew out Sister Rita's name, and she gets a $100 gift card to Watami. So come on up here and get you one of them. You, you, you can go about four times or you can take somebody with you. <laughs> Use it for yourself if you want to. Amen. Amen. Aren't we happy about that? Share that stuff. It works. Amen. And Sister Rita just shared it and tagged some folks and got a blessing whooped on her. Amen. Amen. So do it. Do it. You just never know. We're going to be doing that from time to time. And uh, we, uh, we, we want to get the word out. Amen. 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 Get the word out. That uh, I, I'm, I'm excited. Is Brother Cody without the muscles in here? <laughs> He's over on the other side. Well, Brother Cody Pipkin taught his first home Bible study Tuesday night all by himself right here at the church. Isn't that wonderful? Man, that's exciting. That's exciting, man. My goodness gracious. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, Brother David, just talking about that. Amen. We remember, we don't gauge success by how many booties we put in the seats no more. We gauge success by how many hands are in the harvest. That's another set of hands that's reached out into the harvest. Amen. And listen to me, folks. You don't have to be scared to teach a Bible to nobody because all it says is what we preach. Huh? You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Let me tell you something. It's, it's, there's a great day coming. You will see, you'll see revival because we plant, we water, we don't do the increase. That's up to the Lord. Amen. We're going to give our evening tithe and offerings, Wednesday evening tithe and offerings. And, of course, you'll be able to bring your offering forward. The, uh, we don't necessarily make a, a, a distinction on the pans on Wednesday night, but just make sure you tithe. Make sure you give in the offering. You all are incredibly faithful people. Don't even have to push that too much, but I, I want to thank you always for your faithfulness. And uh, uh, we want to uh, remember, remind you that you can do, give on Givelify. That's the giving app. Uh, PayPal through the website. You can send it to Post Office Box 477, New Matter, Missouri, 63869. You call us, we come by and get it. Or you just drop it off at the house or Sister Meredith. Or you can just drop it off at anybody in our church. We trust anybody. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Amen. We, we got some young fellas that's trying to learn their lesson. They don't know that that, that offering plate just runs one direction. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Unless, unless you might be a redneck and make change in the offering plate. That's what Jeff Foxworthy says, huh? Anybody know Brother Jeff? Uh, that's the closest thing to the Bible in the Reader's Digest that you can find. Amen. Put the prayer up for us if you would, Sister Heidi. Let's pray this prayer with faith. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Won't you bring your tithe and offerings forward? Amen. Or maybe get out your phone and whoop an offering through Givelify. Let's sing.
I got one announcement I want to make before we dismiss the children and the students. Uh, on Friday evening, May the 7th, at 7 o'clock p.m., there will be a Section 4 Ladies' Night at the Kennett UPC Gymnasium in Kennett, Missouri. Sister Sue McGuire will be, be speaking, and uh, she does an incredible job. She's a woman of faith and a woman of prayer. And you won't want to miss going. There's going to be lasagna, Italian, Parmesan chicken, green beans, corn salad, rolls, tea, and dessert. And that almost made me want to go. <laughs> Y'all know how I am. But uh, uh, ages 12 and up, and it's $12 per person. And I haven't said this in a while, but I'm going to say it now. Don't let $12 stop you from going if you're 12 and up. You have run into some trouble, you let me know or you let somebody else know. Somebody will take care of it for you right. on the slick. Right. You know what on the slick means? Nobody will ever know. Right. Amen. 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 We ain't in the business of embarrassing folks, but we want everybody to be there. Amen. So, ladies, Friday, May the 7th, it's always a good time. And you got, you got like... Two and a half, three weeks, something like that. Make plans. If you had something going on on the 7th, won't you try to rearrange your schedule? And I'd like for all of our ladies, 12 and up, to get to go to Section 4 Ladies Night. So, like for the Riverbend kids, come line up across the front. This is crazy hat night. It's crazy hat night. Some of them got it going on, too. Angel... Angel's got his hat on like a wino, so does Rhett. All right. Y'all about ready to come on, get up in here. Y'all get right here. This is a safe place. Come on, buddy. How you doing? Yeah, I saw a smile. I saw a smile right there. Yeah, my goodness, you're a pirate. All right. Aren't we happy for our kids? Yes. Amen. Brother Larry and Sister Ashley are taking uh, one night a month that they're going to give Sister Kim and Sister Casey a break. We may be working in some more folks later on. But uh, all right, Jack, can you show everybody how to walk back nicely? There you go. There you go. There you go. All right, y'all have a great time. Boy, our kids, their number's getting up, and that's exciting. That's exciting. Amen. That's so exciting. The students, uh, y'all can be dismissed. Hey, in case y'all was wondering what revival looks like, you just saw it. You just saw it. Amen. Amen. Did everybody get a handout tonight that wanted one? I made too many, but I had faith tonight. If you know somebody that might like to have one, you can have an extra and take it to them. Uh, it is a front and back handout. Don't let that scare you. The first, the first half of the front page is simply most of it for your benefit, for your research, because I have faith that you're going to take it home and use it. Amen. Now, I don't want to need to give my element speech uh, that I gave Sunday morning. But it's back there if I feel the need to draw it out. Uh, but uh, we give you these handouts. And, and, and I, this is just a request for my benefit. If you leave yours on your pew, it hurts my feelings. So if you don't want to take it home and study it, wad it up and throw it in the waste can on the way out. Make me think you took it home. Go, oh, can somebody say amen? Huh? Take it and use it, folks. It's a tool. We put it in your hand. And uh, I understand there's some that don't want one. That's all right. That's okay. Then you can't hurt my feelings by leaving it on the pew if you don't want one. Hey, Amen. We'll work together. Y'all happy to be in church tonight? Amen. <clears throat> We're going to just get right into the word right now because, uh, I mean, even though it still might take a minute. The plan of God, everything in the end, is going to be just like God planned it. When the trumpet sounds, there will be a bride called up, and it's going to be the bride 
that he intended on taking with him. The plan of God from the beginning included a people who would live for him and serve him. A people that would be pregnant with divine purpose. A people called by his name. Deuteronomy 28, 8, 9, and 10. Credible scripture. Throughout the Old Testament, God identified his people as those who were called by his name. The most famous of those scriptures is probably 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, which says, if my, people which are called by my if my people which are called by my name. A lot of people use that during the pandemic. Now, uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 5, 6, and 7. That's, that's a portion of scripture that I pray uh, every day over my family, over my lost family. And then there's Daniel 9 and 19 are just three examples where the Lord refers to his people as those who are called by his name. Now, Brother David K. Bernard in his book, In the Name of Jesus, he says it like this. God's name represents his character, power, authority, and presence. To be called by his name means to be identified with him. To know his divine character, to experience his miraculous power, to live under his sovereign authority, and to dwell in his sacred presence. Now, in the New Testament, the New Testament church, and I'm still quoting Brother Bernard, the New Testament church continued to exalt God's name, the only difference being that they had a greater revelation of God and His name. The God of the Old Testament, Jehovah, had manifested Himself in flesh to be the Savior, and the name by which He chose to come was Jesus. Everybody say that name. Jesus, which literally means the meaning of the name Jesus is Jehovah Savior or Jehovah saves or Jehovah is my salvation. Isaiah chapter 12 and verse number 2 says, For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song and has come to be my salvation. And I looked that up today. I encourage you to do that in Bible Hub. I looked that up today. And you know what it says? Uh, that come to be my salvation is translated from the Hebrew word Yeshua. Does anybody know what that means? Jesus. That is the Hebrew name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song and has come to be my salvation. It was Jesus Christ. Then Matthew 1 and 21, you'll bring forth the Son and call His name Jesus. And verse number 23, you'll call His name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Jesus Christ was God. Fully God and fully man. He was not lacking in anything or any attribute of God Almighty, nor was he lacking in any attribute of mankind, including all those that we have. Now, thus, since we know that, that the name he chose to reveal himself as a man is the name Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we know that the name of Jesus is the only saving name. Now hear me now. I read this today and I had it in my notes and I took it away, but I'm going to tell you right now. When I bring you a message, I'm not bringing you my words. I'm bringing you the words of the Lord. It is the Bible. And it is the thoughts of God put on paper. It is the mind of God. Remember, all scriptures given by the inspiration of God is God-breathed, which is the life-giving manifestation of God. That's how you and I got to be here. We were created and breathed the breath of God, and the Word of God was breathed into existence. Acts chapter 4 and verse number 12 says... Neither is there salvation in any other name, Brother David, for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The only saving name is Jesus. The highest name that's ever been known. 
Philippians 2 and 9, what's it say? He's highly exalted him. Giving him a name that's above every name. Now let me tell you something right now. Just going to interject this. Jesus Christ of Nazareth was not the only person named Jesus in his town. Just think about that for a minute. Just file it away. And the name by which the New Testament church is identified is Jesus. So, the life that they lived, this early New Testament church and believers, the life they lived was a reflection of the name they carried. 2 Timothy 1 and 19, He let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. All right, Brother Ronnie and I talked about that today. You're full of the Holy Ghost. You better be on a journey to becoming holy. We learned last week there are two aspects of that we better be interested in. What are they? Anybody remember? Pursuit of holiness with the idea of Go ahead, Ronnie. Don't be shy, Brother David. Perfecting it. Meaning that I am not going to rest in somebody else telling me, well, everybody sins every day. Everybody, you don't have to be perfect. I'm not going to rest in that. I'm going to press on to completion because the book says I can. Now, the life they lived was a reflection of the name they carried. Now, I'm going to tell you something tonight. We've been spouting off that we're Jesus' name for, since Pentecost. Tonight, we're going to learn what that really means. I'm going to tell you that there's a whole lot more to saying I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ than just simply saying those words. There's a lot more to this. All right? And I'm going to lay out something for you, a possibility and a pathway to awareness that lets you know that the name is going to be what keeps you. You got a question? All right, man. Don't be raising your hand up. It's like the auction house, man. <laughs> so they lived a life that was a reflection of the name they carried. And as a result, they were often ridiculed, persecuted, and even killed. Now get this. But they persevered. They persevered. Counting the honor of being identified with Jesus Christ of greater worth or of greater value than ending their suffering. Are you with me? I, don't, I, don't, I feel like we're having a hard time connecting tonight, and that's not good. That's not good. Okay? I know we have a whole lot of stuff going on, but you ain't got nothing in your life going on more important than what's happening right here. All right? So let's, let's get focused. Let's get connected. Because of the name of Jesus Christ, they were ridiculed, persecuted, and even killed. But they didn't give up. They counted the honor of being identified with Jesus Christ of greater worth or of greater value than ending their suffering. Because Brother David, history will even tell us, and I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm going to go ahead and let the word fly tonight. Y'all better be ready. I know Kevin and Lacey are both here, and they told me last week I quit too early. Hey, I, got, I want to make Kevin feel welcome. And I want to let Lacey know that I listened to her. So y'all just hold on to yourself. All they had to do, hear me right now. All they had to do to get peace was to say, hey, we're not going to believe in Jesus no more. That's it. Brother David, all they had to do, all Polycarp had to do was to say, hey, I won't preach in that name no more. And they would have not, they would have left him alone. They were persecuted because of their relationship with him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let it go. Let it go. They can be singing that song from Lottie's little show. Okay? Really, all they had to do was say, hey, we won't preach in that name no more, and they would have been left alone. It was their connection to Jesus Christ that brought them suffering. 
And the reason is, is because they never could put Jesus in a box. They never could get Jesus to conform to their thinking. Jesus was constantly pulling them somewhere else and preaching a message that said, you talk about inclusion. This world just thinks they know what inclusion is. Jesus Christ preached inclusion from the jump. Whosoever will, let them come. But the beautiful thing about being in the presence of the Lord is he wouldn't, he loved you so much, he'd let you come just like you were, but he loved you too much to leave you like that. They decided, they were convinced, they were convicted that to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ was of higher value than not suffering. Is that clear? Am I clear on that? Acts chapter 5 and verse number 41, they leave being beat, rejoicing. You can read it, find it out in there for yourself. They got beat, and the Bible says they left out of their rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus Christ. Now this wasn't a new thing, nor was it unexpected for the disciples. Now while they did not clearly understand the ramifications of it, they did know that it was coming because the Lord told them it was coming. Matthew chapter number 10, Jesus is sending his disciples out to preach. One place says two by two. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast out and heal all manner of sickness and disease. Then he told them to go and preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand, to heal, to cleanse the leper, raise the dead, and cast out devils. He told them don't worry about food or clothing nor where you're going to sleep, but everything you need will be provided for you. And he did tell them that there are going to be those that oppose you that you're going to be mistreated and abused both verbally and physically, but you were to not try to defend yourself. Matter of fact, he told him, Brother Terrence, he said, don't even try to make a plan what you're going to say when they throw you in jail. Don't even make a plan. He said, because when they put you in jail and they put you before the judge and before the court, the Spirit's going to tell you what to say. It's in the book. You can read it. You can read it. Boy, well, we worry about a whole lot of stuff trying to help somebody, and the Lord's telling you, hey, if they throw you in jail for preaching the name, don't you worry one bit. That means you're in the right place. I want you. Because I, I got a message for you to preach. Huh? How exciting is that? That's the God we serve. That's the power that is within us. We got to get rid of this fear and this uncertainty and this trepidation and hesitancy and realize that we are in the most optimal, high prime time uh, occasion to spread the gospel to the whole world. They were warned. Here we're going to start teaching now. They were warned of division and betrayal that would come from those close to them. And it would result in some of them being killed. Said your brother's going to betray you. Sister's going to betray you. Brother David, it even says children are going to betray their parents. So they're killed. Now that's where they're getting sent out. Matthew chapter number 10. And then he says this. Matthew chapter 10 verse number 22. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Hold up. You'll be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Now the NIV, I didn't give it to Sister Heidi, but I really liked it. it says you'll be hated by everyone because of me. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Now I want you to file Matthew chapter number 10. Brother Billy, we can see that Jesus is sending out his disciples and one of the first things he teaches them is there's going to be some opposition and then he says it just as clearly as he can. You will be hated of all men for my name's sake. 
So let's just file that away in our bank right here and go to Matthew chapter 24. The disciples come to Jesus privately. And in verse number 3, they ask Him, as He sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto Him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So he begins to share with them the signs and happenings of the end of the world and the condition of the world when the Lord shall come again. And among the things he speaks of is this in verse number 9. He says, And they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So from the beginning of their ministry, and in spite, you understand, when he sent them out, he sent them out to heal, to deliver, cast out devils, in spite, Brother Shannon, of the positive impact they were going to make on their world. From the beginning of their ministry until the coming of the Lord, the people of the name shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now, personally, I have always acquainted these passages with the fact that we baptize in Jesus' name. In accord with the Bible, but out of step with most mainstream religions who baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now I will say unequivocally and without a doubt, nobody in the Bible was ever baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's not in there. It was in Matthew 28 and 19, and it was a commandment to baptize. And it was given to the 12 disciples, the same ones that stood up on the day of Pentecost, and said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, Acts 8, Acts 10, Acts 19, and Acts 22 all tell us they're baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, or in the name of the Lord. Nobody in the scripture was ever baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There's one saving name. Acts 4 and 12, it's the name of Jesus. John 5 and 43 says, I am come in my Father's name. Matthew 1 and 21 says, you'll bring forth the Son and call his name Jesus. And John 14, 26 says, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. The only saving name whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And they're going to hate you for it. It's just a title. That's right. Yep, because, and this, is, this has been used and used and used, but if Brother Billy goes and sprays 10,000 acres for somebody and they make out the check to Father, to Son, or Holy Ghost, he's stuck out. Because he's a Father and he's a Son and he's got the Holy Ghost, but that ain't his name. The only saving name given to men is Jesus Christ. Now, I've always thought that it, that's what was going to make people hate us. But I'm finding out, Brother Billy, as you testified to us and as others have testified to us, that more and more people are realizing that the Bible says baptize in the name of Jesus. That's the way the Bible says I mean, I can't tell you how many people you teach Bible studies to and they say, how come I ain't ever seen that before? It's been there the whole time. But tradition begins to overwhelm truth. 
Oh, we don't like to talk about that because we're scared we might hurt somebody's feelings. But the truth is, if we don't hurt their feelings, they're probably going to be lost. You can knock me down, spit in my face. That's what I feel like doing tonight. Don't step on my blue suede shoes. Are we going on TV, Sister Heidi? All right, I'm glad of that. I need to start pulling that up here because there'll be some people like comment 53 amens in a row. <laughs> I just need to pull me up a thing right here and I get to feeling discouraged, Sister Marie. I'll just look at the Facebook church. <laughs> Recently, when I was reading this passage, trying to read the Bible through, I realized they're not going to hate us because we baptize in Jesus' name. They're not. Let me read you something. If you don't have Zondervan's Illustrated Bible Dictionary through your app on your phone, you need to get it. It's an incredible resource. I inherited the actual book from my dad, but I have it downloaded through Olive Tree on my iPad and on my phone. It's an incredible resource. Now, it's not apostolic. It's not apostolic, but it's information. Now, what I'm about to read to you, you think they're apostolic. I looked up, bear with me just a minute. Can I read you what it says? Bear with me just a little bit. I looked up name because the book does say they're going to hate us for his namesake. So Sister Maria, I looked up name. I want to find out. Let's find out what it is because in Bible times, name meant something different than it does now. I mean, we'll go get a book and find out what to name a kid. Or name it after our favorite TV show. Okay. If mom and daddy had done that when I was a little boy, my name would be Marshall Dillon. Okay. I used to try to ride my bicycle like he rode his horse, squinting into the sun, carrying my gun. Okay. In Bible times, names had greater significance than they usually have today. A name was given only by a person in a position of authority. I'm reading right out of the dictionary, okay? Genesis 2, 19, 2 Kings 23 and 34. And could signify that the person named was appointed to a particular position, function, or relationship. Genesis 35, 18, 2 Samuel 12 and 25. The name given was often determined by some circumstance at the time of birth. Genesis 19 and 22, sometimes the name expressed a hope or a prophecy. Isaiah 8, 1 through 4, and Hosea 1 and 4. Now get this. When a person gave his own name to another, it signified the joining of the two in very close unity as when God gave his name to Israel. Deuteronomy 28, 9 and 10. Get this. I'm reading right out of the dictionary, Brother David. To be baptized into someone's name, therefore, meant to pass into new ownership. Matthew 28, 19, Acts 8, 16, 1 Corinthians 1, 13, and 15. In the scripture, there is the closest possible relationship between a person and his name, the two being practically equivalent. So that to remove the name was to extinguish the person. I'm going to interject. This ain't Zondervan. This is just GL. But Brother Billy, if that's the case, in 325 AD thereabouts when they went to baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they in fact... We're removing the name of the only saving one. Mm. Okay. To forget God's name is to depart from him. Jeremiah 23 and 27. The expression, the name of the Lord, could signify not simply the word by which he is called, but more importantly, the Lord himself in the attributes he had manifested, holiness, power, and love, etc. 
Often in the Bible, the name signified the presence of the person in the character revealed. To be sent or to speak in someone's name meant to carry that person's authority and to pray in the name of Jesus is to pray as his representatives on earth in his spirit and with his aim and implies the closest union with Christ. So my conclusion is we won't be hated for saying the name of Jesus in baptism, for praying in the name of Jesus, or doing anything in the name of Jesus, but we will be hated for how the name of Jesus is displayed in our lives. In our teaching and our preaching. So let me take a little side note then. So to be baptized in the name of Jesus carries a greater significance than simply invoking of the name. It involves taking on the character and attributes of Jesus Christ. Understanding this, he was not the only Jesus who ever lived or even lived during his time. But he's the only one who knew no sin and became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Hear me right now. For 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, For He hath made Him to be sin for us, He who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Hear me now as I tell you this, and I feel it with all confidence even greater now. It is going to be the manifestation of the truth of Jesus Christ in our lives, our teaching, and our preaching that's going to cause people to hate us. I felt it strong this week. I had it hit me in two ways. Brother Ronnie, I had a whole other Bible study plan to teach. And there was two situations, Brother David, where the Holy Ghost began to, to come at me with some truth. And I want to tell you something. You better wake up. The book says uh, be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. you got to hear me right now. The enemy's after us. He's after every one of us. And he ain't going to stop just because you started coming to church. Hear me right now. We have got to realize that it is the saving name that separates us. Not just the invoking of that name, but of fashioning and forming and being transformed by the power of Jesus Christ into what He wants us to be. And that means you don't go where He don't go. You don't say what he don't say. You don't look at what he don't look at. You don't drink or eat what he don't drink or eat. And you don't look like he wouldn't look. I wish I had a few more stronger amens. But I want you to hear me right now. Here's what the fear is of God, Brother Terrence. Here's why the Lord told me to come and bring this word to you tonight. Uh, it's because uh, the enemy is coming in. And he doesn't come in holding up a big sign that says, Hey, I want to let y'all know I'm about to take you down. I want to let you know I'm after you. But he sneaks in in the dark times, Brother David. Uh, he's a deceiver. He's a serpent. Uh, he's an enemy. He's an adversary. And he's going to try to tear you down. And he's going to come more biting at your heel than he comes between your eyes. Right. Now, yes, sir. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to see your comment and raise you one all the times, not just sometimes, all the time. That's what it's designed to do. Here we go, Brother Ronnie. Bring us a place of tension where we have to make a decision to either follow Jesus Christ or follow the God of the world. Now, I read this again today, and let me tell you, it's plain. Mark chapter 16, verse number 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. 
There's your two boats. There ain't no middle road, folks. You either is or you isn't. Say, well, what about making mistakes? That's why the Bible says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. The Bible says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine, let us go on unto perfection. That's why the Bible says, my little children, I write these things to you that you sin not. But if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Okay, the Bible, he may, for we don't have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like as we were yet without sin. That's why there's a, the, uh, I, uh, I, I want us to realize I'm not preaching that, that you've got to live every day of your life without messing up, but I am preaching you've got to want to. got to want it. you got to want it. And Brother David, you are so right. It's going to happen in here tonight. Because I, I ain't near about done yet, but I, I'm near about out of time already. I've just been blowing and going, Brother Terrence. But there is going to always be, and I'm going to say this in almost every person in here, there will be a time when some truth is preached into your life that rubs you the wrong way and there will be a carnal reaction rise up to it. Then you got to deal with it. Remember Brother Shannon? The Lord does that on purpose. He brings it to the surface. And sometimes we'll wonder, hold up a minute, I don't want that coming out of me and you better realize, oh yes I do. The Lord brought it up so I can deal with it. Okay. Nobody minds the name of Jesus. This is here we are, Brother David. Nobody minds the name of Jesus until it convicts them. Or in some cases, condemns them. Because there are situations that we're in in our lives that ain't going to get no better. And the Lord ain't going to be able to work them out and make them good. Got to leave it. Stop, cease, desist, quit. And that's where the condemnation power of the Holy Ghost comes in. When the Lord lets you know, you better stop, you better turn around, you better go back where you came from because this direction don't end nowhere good. All right. I want you to look at this. Are you ready? And some people are like, I ain't sure if I'm ready or not. But, well, ready or not, here we come. I want you to, I ain't making this up. I am not making this up. What I'm fixing to share with you comes right out of the Bible dictionary. Different one. Look up the word hated. In the original Greek, it's the Greek word miseo, I-M-I-S-E-O. And it is a comparative word. And according to Helps Word Studies, Here's what they said. Note the comparative meaning of 3404. That's their number for Maseo. Which centers in moral choice, elevating one value over another. The feelings described as hatred will rise up because there is a disparity in values between those who carry the name of Jesus and those who don't. Are you with me? It is a comparative term. In any other case, Brother David, it wouldn't be called hate. But it is when something rises up in your sweet little baby's life, that you know is wrong, but because it's your baby, you don't want nobody telling them they can't do it. So you will draw a line in the sand and rearrange your values based upon who it is and what they're doing versus what they're doing. 
It is like the many things that are out in the world and that are being shoved down our throat and are being given to you in every form of medium. The news, TV programs, TV shows, movies, everything, social media, everything you allow in, these choices are being presented to you. And hear me right now when I tell you that the enemy's coming with it. And there will be a time when you begin to be desensitized to sin. And it don't feel near as bad as it used to. It is a comparative term which centers on a moral choice elevating one value over another. Which means if it makes me happy, I should be able to do it. And if you tell me I shouldn't, I hate you. Uh, I mean, that's what it is. I should be able to love who I want to. And if you tell me I shouldn't, I hate you. That's true. Is everybody with me on this? Is everybody, anybody not uncomfortable right now? Oh, <laughs> yes, sir. There is. That's why we have the book. That's why we have the book. And that's why we have the Holy Ghost. And that's why you have the man of God. Because I, I, I'm not going to use you much longer, Brother Ronnie. We're going to have like 50 more people and you're going to be able to hide in the crowd. But I want you to know he has come not only to Brother Shannon, but he's come to me and said, if there's anything I need to know to do or not do, please tell me because I want to know. That's got to be the attitude we all have. You remember that message when I had you come up here and stand? And I said, come go with me. We got to go with him. Sister Maria, we got to take his yoke and put it on us and say, teach me. I want to know everything you've got for me. And 2 Peter chapter number 1 verse number 3 tells us he's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Now understand this, the Holy Ghost is for you. God is for you, not against you. And if he brings truth into your life that steps on your toes, be thankful and not angry. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. No, you got that on your hand out there? Yeah, but that's, that's on the handout. We're fixing to find out in just a minute what it does to the church. It don't feel good to be hated. It don't feel good to be hated. No, it's like old Roger Turner used to tell us. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Settling for less. Brother Billy, I wrote that down and then I... Settling for less is what the whole religious world has done. Settling for less. Getting to a point where it's uncomfortable and drawing the line right there and saying, I'm just going to stay right here. I'm not going to keep pressing toward the mark. And before you know it, you are lost and don't know where to go. All for the sake of not willing to be uncomfortable. 
and not being teachable and not having a soft heart but a hard one and not being stubborn and stiff-necked and not making the big mistake of confusing the messenger and the message. Because everybody likes to get mad at the preacher. <laughs> When they should be repenting. Y'all understand what I mean by that? That means the word got down inside of you somewhere and hurt your feelings. So our response to it when we got brought to the place of tension was to say, he shouldn't have been saying that. He shouldn't have been. That's why I've said for years, I can preach against everything in the world till I preach against something somebody's doing. And then all of a sudden, it, it ain't fair. He's picking on me. We've got Charlie Brown song going on. Okay? Now let's move in real quick. That's where fights come from. And I, I had that in my mind. Fights come from unruly lusts that war in your members. If you're fussing and cussing and belly aching and moaning with people all the time, the way to fix it is not fix everybody else. Fix you. Everybody else ain't the problem. If you've, got, if you've worked 10 jobs and fell out with somebody at every one of the jobs, the jobs wasn't the problem. You is. Fix it. Get fixed. All right, let's move in here real quick because I want to get done with this. Let's go to verse number 9 again. Matthew 24 and 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. What that really means, Brother Billy, is that means they might like you and they might love you, but because you make them feel convicted, they're going to love you a little less. Their desire for the world will overwhelm their affection for you, and you will represent what they wish they were but they're not willing to pay the price to be. Man, that'll preach now. Universal hatred. Man, I wish I... Mm, I'm not going to go there right now, but I want you to know that the media in this country has manipulated a large portion of the feelings of the people of this country and made them hate and distrust one another over an ideology. And made people think that because of the color of somebody's skin, we can't like them. You think for one second, Brother David, that the tables ain't going to turn someday and Christian, Bible-believing, holy, godly-living people aren't all of a sudden going to be the enemy? Oh, uh-uh. You tell me right now, I promise you, before the Lord, we're going through a trial run for the end time right now. The devil's going to find out. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. The devil is trying to find out what he can get away with. Sister Kim, we'll fight over what kind of song we like or don't like, what sound is set on, who's sitting in our seat, who's not sitting in our seat, what's got our potluck and who ate my, my cherry pie, and we'll be wanting to quit church over first one thing, then another. What are we going to do when real hell breaks loose in our lives? And we're going to be lost. Oh, it's going to happen. I'm fixing to show it. I'm fixing to show it in about the next 10 minutes. First thing I did is I hit my iPad when I got excited. And it slid on me. Now this next part is important. Here we go. You'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Not for simply using the name of Jesus, but exemplifying what the name of Jesus stands for. Taking a stand, drawing a line, preaching truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. You don't have a relationship with God aside from him. You don't. Now this is very important. 
Never saw this before till this morning. My wife can tell you I spent virtually the whole entire day in the Word today. The possible effects the Bible teaches of being hated. A people of the name. Verse number 10. So you're going to be hated of all for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end, we're fixing to get that. But verse number 10, who's this talking about? And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. No, it's the church. I thought it was the world too. But it's those who are hated for my name's sake. Okay? When we begin to come under attack. Let me tell you something right now. I'm just going to throw this out there. This is something I've been experiencing lately. Okay? And it's still safe to say. Even though somebody might get mad, but though you won't get too nervous. I don't care what you call it and how you dress it up or when the date is. If you're shacking up and you're committing fornication, you're sinning. Okay? You can't make it pretty. You can't dress it up and make it right. You got to stop if you want to be right. All right? And if you get on Facebook and you congratulate your honey because she moved in with her boyfriend and got a new living room suit, you are an accomplice. Is that all right, Brother David? And you know what's happening? You're starting to slip, and it's a slippery slope. You say, well, no, 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 you just don't say nothing. You don't go stand out in front of their house with a sign that says, you know, no whores welcome. All right? But by the same token, you don't go around bragging on them either. You better go to the closet and pray for them. Excuse me. I, I'm sorry, but I'm just telling you, the enemy's after us. And the way he's going to come sneaking in is he's going to come rubbing the back of your head and saying, I just don't think that's quite as bad as we used to think it was. Yeah. And the next thing you know, we're all lost and we don't know where we're going and we live in chaos and we're out of order because God made it to work the right way and that's the only way he's going to bless. Yeah. Well, y'all better not get my... I've been doing good tonight. Boom. It was. He began to dance to Delilah's tune. Well, you're right. You're right. But here's what we got to learn. We got to learn to be holy and not be ugly. Remember, we've talked about this. The woman came to the well and Jesus told her, Hun, you ain't got no husband. That's right. But you've had five. And the, and the sixth one, you ain't even married to. And you know what she went back to the town doing? Saying, oh, y'all got to come hear this man. He told me everything I did and I love him for it. Because the spirit behind it. And that, but what, what we're having to do tonight is learn we don't have the privilege of redrawing the lines. He already drew them in the beginning. And he said they're going to hate you if you behave, preach, and teach like me. And you better be there. That's why, we gotta, that's why I'm teaching this tonight. Because here's what happens. When the hatred starts rising, and when y'all go to tasters, or wherever people go, I don't know if everybody goes to tasters anymore or not, but we, we're talking about having a, getting us a little coffee thing going here. When you go to coffee and you begin to debate, boy, I think he might have went too far tonight. I'm not sure if he needs to be preaching like that or not. He, somebody's going to say something. When you start doing that stuff, you're in dangerous territory. It does. Yep. 
Yeah. Like, for instance, if your sweetie pie comes to church who ain't doing right and the preacher preaches all over the place, we get mad at the preacher. Instead of, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God, because they know where truth is still preached. Huh? It is. It is. It is, but we don't know how to handle it right. And it ain't the sinner that don't know how to handle it right. It's the church. And then shall many be offended and fall away. That's why you know it's the church. When, when the lines begin to be drawn clearly, many are going to be offended. That word offended means fall away or stumble. And shall betray one another. That word betray means literally abandon one another. And guess what comes next? And shall hate one another. Choose another value on a moral basis. Hate one another. That's what's coming to the church when we begin to be under attack from the enemy. Can I tell you it ain't happened yet? But it's coming. All this hate and venom you see being spewed out in the world, there's coming a day the church is going to be the recipient of that. We better be ready. And look here, verse number 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Let me ask you this. What are these false prophets going to be preaching that deceives us? It's going to be an easy gospel. A user-friendly message. Actually, Brother David, after I racked my brain just like you did and thought, what are they going to be preaching? The next verse tells us. Verse number 12 says... And because iniquity shall abound. That's what they're preaching. A gospel without any guardrails. Iniquity, it means lawlessness. Anarchy. It is characterized. Listen, I don't care what you believe, what political party you are, whatever. You better not be out there holding up no sign saying get rid of the police. You think we got problems now? You get rid of the laws, you have chaos. You have uh, Armageddon, for lack of a better word. Okay? But that's what they're preaching in the church. No structure, no standards, no guardrails, no fences, no protection, no safety. It's every man for himself. It is iniquity. One dictionary said general immorality. Undermining steadfast adherence to principle. Iniquity abounds. These false prophets are going to preach something. Hear me right now. Brother David said it. But they're going to preach a gospel that makes you happy. That makes you feel good. Now I'm going to use Lacey again for just a minute. Is that alright if I use you? Remember when Brother Massey was here? Y'all remember when Brother Massey was here and he stood right here and said, Jesus like a magnet to the north, the south. Remember I had to tell him which way was east because I'm smart like that? Huh? <laughs> then Lacey comes to me in the foyer and she said yesterday, is that right? Yesterday, the day before on a Saturday, she told one of her friends, I don't know what the deal is at the river bend, but I feel like a magnet's got a hold of my heart pulling me down there. Is that truth? Is that truth? Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Ghost works. But hear me right now. When they get here, they got to find what they're looking for. They don't need to find a powder puff gospel. The world ain't looking for that. How many of you all saw on Facebook that Baptist preacher preaching this past Sunday that people were sharing all over the place talking about men needing to step up and be men in their homes? And people were sharing it by the thousands were watching it. This world is not looking for sissified church. 
It's looking for strong, holiness, believing church that will change your life. That will lead you. Come on now. It will lead you out of darkness into His marvelous light. It will bring you peace and it will bring you comfort. It will bring you hope. And there's going to be people who hate you. But you're going to be so enveloped in the power of the name of Jesus uh, that the very one that hates you may be the evangelist uh, that leads this latter day revival. That's how it happened with Paul. That's how it happened with Paul. Yes. Yes. Yep. Uh-uh. That's, it's happening. It's happening right now. It's happening. Look you here. And because iniquity shall abound, complete and lack of structure, no guardrails, no boundaries, no fences, no standards, the love of many shall wax cold. Because here's what happens. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And when the love waxes cold, what happens is fear overwhelms faith and it leads to distrust. And distrust cultivates an every man for himself attitude and it manifests itself in a struggle to survive that is dependent only on me. And you realize, I thought I was joining them, but I really was isolating myself. But he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved. Now, I'm fixing to minister to you. Okay? I'm fixing to minister to you. I'm okay tonight? Yeah. All right. Look at here. That word endure means to stand your ground, to stay behind. Now, when I first read that, I thought, man, what do you mean stay behind? The same shall be saved. So let me take you to another passage of Scripture. Stand your ground, remain under the load until the end. That was who's going to be saved. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 13, and I'm closing with this. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not. That's talking about people that have died even as others which have no hope. You see, there's a difference. We have those that die with hope and those that die without hope. Remember that earlier? Believe and baptize, be saved. Believe not, be damned. You've got two groups. That's all you're ever going to have. Sheep and goats. It's in the book. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now here we go. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now let's talk just for a second and we'll close. The first group that rises are who? Dead in Christ. The second group are identified as what? Alive and remain. Alive means you ain't dead yet. And remain means what? Still in Christ. Do you know who that is? Those who endured until the end. And you know where they endured at? In Christ Jesus. Still identified with him. And when you identify with him, you love what he loves. You hate what he hates. You grab a hold of what he grabs a hold of too. You turn loose of what he turns loose of. Huh? 
As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they shall be called the sons of God. They're going to not hate us because we preach Jesus' name baptism. The truth is they really don't care. But why we're going to be hated is because we take stand against sin and for holiness in every way. In every way. So get ready. You know what this means? This means we fast. This means we pray. This means we get in the word. This means, Brother Ronnie, that we go to our friends and our peers and say, if you see anything in my life that's getting out of kelter, tell me. Because sometimes the deceiver, the enemy, he just rocks me to sleep. Huh? Singing a song I like to hear. And the next thing you know, I shake myself. Brother David, just like every other time. But he did not know that the Spirit had departed from him. How you live makes a difference. And it's not how you live to go to the Pentecost church. It's when your life manifests the will of the Lord Jesus Christ in every way. Stand with me if you would. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for your word, for truth. Thank you, God, for a wake-up call for each of us. I hope, Lord, that it goes resounding even across the Internet waves. A wake-up call that tells us it's not good enough to just be good enough. It's not okay to just get by. But we've got to pursue you with everything that's within us. And, and we've got to get to the place where we value being identified as one of them. We value as being identified by the name of Jesus Christ that we believe what you preach, what you teach, who you are in every way. From the beginning, from the beginning of time, God, you have laid down your mandates and you've laid down your will and your desire. There is a creative order and we have to follow in it and we have to live it as close as we can. I pray, God, right now that the Holy Ghost begins to work. I pray that there is a spirit of cooperation and camaraderie that sweeps across this house that there's nobody who is willing to contend for their own private and personal views but that we all come together until we come in the unity of the faith as a perfect man full and complete in the Holy Ghost that we don't stop pressing we don't stop pushing we don't stop striving and we don't stop trying to bring somebody with us I pray that it happens in the name of the Lord Jesus Amen, amen, amen. Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, we're going to have a great time. Sunday at, at 11 o'clock. Uh, if you haven't been coming to Elements, I, I, I encourage you to come. We have a good time, a little laid back. Donuts and coffee and milk and juice. Um, the church-wide yard sale, need to have the stuff here by Wednesday, April the 28th. And uh, the yard sale is April 30th and May the 1st. It's citywide. Um, this Saturday is the men's crawfish cook-up in Carruthersville. We've already paid for that, already got our tickets for that for those that wanted to go. And I love you. Any more announcements? Uh, they're eating at noon. So probably, I probably want to try to be there by like 11.15 because they start... They got a prize for the early arrivals called Boudin. Boudin. If you never had none, you don't know what you're missing. Is there any other announcements? Love you. God bless you. See you Sunday morning.